All right, howdy all, hopefully we're live. Uh, I am cleaning up the Riker today. It is time for it to go bye-bye. Uh, it's been around for four years now and uh, I've just had enough problems with it. Uh, it's time for it to find a new home. Uh, <laughs> it's very dirty. I could bring you over here, I suppose, a little closer. I'll do that in a minute after I start washing it up. But uh, it's been sitting either at the warehouse or under my gazebo for several months, uh, and it's filthy. It needs a bath. So, check and see who's uh, here. F&P Farms, howdy, howdy. Star Trek dude, how's it going, man? Hey, Murnell, how's it going, sir? Bob, how's it going, sir? F and P. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell it uh, private party or if I'm going to trade it in. If I trade it in, I will bring you over here. Let's see. Try not to mess up the camera when I do this because I'm tethered. This is not a wireless cam. Uh, I've got fancy suspension on here. Elka Stage 4 all the way around uh, and some other touring mods, you know, uh, uh, the diamond floorboards from Le Monster Garage, stuff like that. Uh, and a whole slew of accessories. I've got the shad side case, uh, the rear seat with the folding backrest. Uh, under there is the max mount plate to put other stuff on, like, you know, bags or whatever, uh, including the little link tail bag here. And this is a cooler uh, that I even bought for it in anticipation of going out on a uh, Riker on the beach ride, and I never did it, but yeah, anyway. So. Anyway, uh, if I s trade it in at a dealer, it will be stripped of the fancy suspension because the dealer isn't going to give me diddly squat uh, as far as trade in on the bike. Uh, they're going to screw me pretty good, I'm sure. Uh, I've already been quoted 6000 uh, and uh, Blue Book private party sale uh, value is uh, like 7900 or something like that, almost $8,000. So they're trying to screw me for almost two grand at the dealer. Uh, and that's, you know, with all the stuff on it. So I would have to pull the suspension off. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to list it for sale with uh, all the goodies uh, installed already and everything, all the touring accessories included. Uh, and if somebody doesn't like that price, I'll give it to them, you know, the, the bone stock price. I'll pull the suspension off and find another uh, Riker enthusiast that uh, wants to upgrade their suspension. So anyway, I'm going to get the water started here uh, as I look at a couple more comments. Phil from the UK, how are you, man? Daniel, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate that my Riker has been such a problem child. Uh, it, mechanically, it's sound. It doesn't have any problems now since the uh, CVT was fixed. The only issue with it is the uh, the steering and the you know the alignment just doesn't want to stay in spec. Uh, I can get it tuned up to where it rides and handles pretty much straight, but that only lasts for a few days, maybe a week, and then it's back to meandering around on the road, and I just don't want to deal with that anymore. Uh, apparently, Can-Am has now got a uh, steering update kit for these things. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised it hasn't gone to class action lawsuit or something else. Uh, I'll, I'll do a, a video on my real thoughts on Can-Am after I get rid of this thing. Uh, but yeah, needless to say, uh, Can-Am's warranty service and support is absolute crap, and I don't recommend them. Uh, I kind of knew I was getting into unknown territory with this, uh, being a 2019, a first gen. Uh, I just didn't expect that the problems would be so hard to resolve. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get started here. Uh, got comments popping up. Oh, hey, is Heather in here? Heather, hey! Hey, Heather. Uh, you're probably at work, so I'm not going to ask you to moderate, but if you want to play around in here, feel free. Um, I'll, uh, if I don't sell it with the Elka on there, I might just do a giveaway on the channel. Uh, I mean, I've already spent the money on the stuff. It was $2,000 worth of suspension, so uh, it's not something that I think that I could get money back out of, you know, not a lot. I mean, if I sold them used, I'd probably maybe get six or 800 bucks out of them or something like that. Uh, but I'll, I'll put some feelers out there, and if it's less than some reasonable amount, you know, 800 bucks or 600 bucks, whatever it is, then I'll just do a giveaway on the channel. It'll be fun. Good morning, Patrick. How are you, sir? Uh, Link. Hey, Link. How's it going, buddy? 
Yeah, Riker's got to go. It's got to go. Heather, yeah, that's why I decided to do it right at 11. I figured some people would be at lunch. So, uh, anywho, uh, I'm going to get started on the uh, fun here because it's hot and getting hotter. So, this is going to go to somebody. I mean, if they want to, if somebody wants to get into this and do uh, the suspension updates, uh, or the, sorry, the, uh, the steering update, and if they can fix that wandering, this would be a great bike. Uh, it's just had the 12,000 mile service done on it, new belt, new, you know, full maintenance and everything, 15 or $1,600, whatever that was. Uh, so it's ready to go for another long time. Uh, I've got all the touring accessories. I've got another brand new rear tire up in my attic that I've got to pull down. Uh, so yeah, anyway, it'd be a fun bike for somebody. Bathe. You dirty beast. I really like the floorboards on here. Uh, that was one of the best upgrades I did to it. Get it all soaking wet here and then I gotta get the soap bucket from the other side. So while I'm not looking at comments, uh, everyone, uh, throw your comments in there if you've got questions on the Riker or the Can-Ams uh, and you want an owner's honest opinion, uh, I will give it to you. Unadulterated, uh, unfederated. <laughs> Try to keep it clean here, though, as far as the uh, cursing. I'll leave that for another video. I'll put that on my quasi-raw channel. How about that? I started that, by the way. I've uh, only put a couple of videos up there. I haven't published one as public yet. Uh, you can come on out. My son is going to get pizza. Um, put a couple of videos out there, but I haven't done a lot. What? You're going to get the pizza. Where's the car? The car's not here. The truck is here. Mom's at work. My son's trying to figure out where the car is to go get the pizza. The car's not here, man. Anywho. Get her getting soaked up. I'm going to rinse out the bucket over here. And, oh, here it is. Zip wax. People always ask, you know, what do you use for... Uh, Washing your motorcycles and you know, stuff like that. Just car soap, anything. It's not going to hurt them. The only thing that's potentially bad is if you use uh, a high pressure spray gun and get real close or force water in where it shouldn't get in. Yeah. You got to watch out for. Usually, after I'm done with the wash, I hit my uh, bikes with, uh, you know, a chamois or a towel, obviously, to keep them from water spotting up. But I uh, go back over them when they're dry with the Honda Pro Spray, or what is it, Pro Honda Spray Wax and Cleaner stuff. Uh, and that's what I usually dry wash my bikes with as well. Uh, but it's got uh, Carnauba Wax and other stuff in it that helps to seal up your plastics. Glugga, lugga, lugga. I'll get back to comments in a moment. I apologize. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Getting soapy. You know, I've never even used the, uh, the cooler that I showed a minute ago. Never used it. I bought it from Tom, uh, tripod up in the, uh, the Dallas, oh, my handle just broke. That's not great. Now I gotta start over. <laughs> the Riker's curse continues. <laughs> I just filled it up, soaked it up, and uh, I went to lift it, and my, my bucket broke, man. Uh, Tom up in uh, Round Rock, uh, friends with uh, Kevin, Bikes and Pizza, uh, he had a Riker that he sold to his daughter and uh, they didn't need some of the stuff that he had purchased for it. Uh, and that uh, cooler was one of the items. I had most everything else. Okay, back to comments.
Uh, you found the key, I presume? Get some drinks on the way back. I don't care what. Okay, trying to catch up. Oh, hey, about to overflow. All right, I'm gonna soak the wash mitt and then uh, catch up on comments. Uh, so Phil from the UK, how's it going, man? Rez from Japan, nice. Uh, all right, let's go down to a lot of miles on that belt aftermarket variator. Um, no, actually, that's the factory. If you're talking to me, uh, Prime, let me go. Let's see here. Oh, no, here we go. Allen, uh, 7,900. Eh, that's actually not that many miles. Uh, the Honda recommends, I think it's uh, 16,000 miles. 12 or 16, something like that. But if you're running hard highway miles, uh, like what we saw on the uh, Cannonball, uh, 8,000 miles is about it. Uh, you should replace it early <laughs> instead of ending up on the side of the road. Uh, where are we going? Do, 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 do. Can Am or CT125? Ooh, that's a that's an interesting question. Totally different animals. Uh, rolling on three. Hey, hey, Keith, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, I'm kind of sorry to see it go too, but this one has been a problem child, as everybody knows, uh, since it was born. Uh, I think it was just born under a bad star. Uh, Might have been, uh, you know, after a drunken quinceanera or something like that. The assembly line guys in Mexico just couldn't get their act straight. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to pass it off to somebody else. Ugh. I haven't decided if I'm going to trade it or not. It's really going to depend on if I can uh, get a decent price uh, private party uh, or, you know, enough bites private party. If I don't get any nibbles on the line, then I may end up trading it. Uh, I could sell it to one of the dealers outright, uh, but I'm not getting very good quotes on that. Uh, they're telling me, you know, barely 6,000 bucks. If I twist their arm, I might be able to get 6,500. That's easily 1,500 under what uh, book value is. So I don't know. I'll see how it goes. If I end up having to trade it and I can get more trade, then I'll just trade into another bike. I'm not sure what that'll be. We'll find out. Uh, bear with me a moment as I show my butt to the camera. The crazy thing about this uh, Riker, mechanically speaking, uh, it has been extremely reliable mechanically, uh, minus the alignment issues. And I have the original battery still in this thing, four plus years old, and it still starts the bike just fine. Even with as infrequently as I ride this thing, I, I would have figured that the, uh, Battery would have, you know, sulfated up, discharged, gone to hell. Nah, still starts fine. Turns over every time. The longest I let it sit was about uh, almost nine months. And that was at the warehouse. And sat down on it, hit the button, spun the fuel pump right up. The starter was a little slow kicking over, uh, but it fired right up and it's still fine. And that was a year ago. What do we got? Uh, Mads World. Hey, Glenn, how's it going, buddy? I think I missed your call yesterday. I'll return your call later. Uh, <laughs> 38 viewers. I'm surprised I've actually got that many in here because uh, it's uh, work day, but I'm recording this so everybody can watch later or whatever. Uh, uh, so comments, comments, come on. Comments and ideas about the Riker. Oh, Rez. Yeah. Hey, good question. Uh, I bought it. Uh, I was the very first one in Texas. Uh, so it was January, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly which day it was early January, like January 4th or something like that, uh, in 2019 when it first came out. So it's a little over four years old. It just ran out of its extended factory warranty, which is another reason why I really don't want to hang on to it. And I don't want to keep it anymore. Uh, because even the factory warranty that I had was crap. The, uh, ridiculous best warranty, B-E-S-T, what does that stand for? It's like worst warranty is more like it because they don't cover anything. I mean anything. If they can find a way to wiggle out of paying for something, they do. And uh, forget the money? Yep. Got to get the money, man. 
My wallet should be right there on the cabinet. You're not awake yet, are you? Ugh. Stays up all night playing games and doing his investment stuff that he's doing in the background and uh, gets his days and nights all turned around. So when I wake him up at 11 to go get pizza, he's like, uh huh, what day is it? Daytime. Yeah, so if I total up all the money that I put in this thing, I, I don't really want to because it's depressing, but uh, it's probably north of uh, almost $18,000. Um, and considering that kind of money, I could have gotten an F3, you know, more bike. I wasn't really in the market for an F3 at the time because I didn't want a big, heavy three-wheeler. I wanted something light and athletic, and that's what the Riker promised to be, and it is. Uh, but with the handling issues I've had with mine, it just didn't work out for me. A lot of other uh, owners have had really good luck with theirs, so it's not uh, the entire platform. It's not the, the Riker itself that's bad. It's just this particular one has got uh, handling issues that don't want to be resolved. Uh, okay, sorry, trying to catch up. Yeah, there's Tom right there. Hey, buddy. Yeah, my Riker videos, that's right. That's right. Uh, and remember this guy, Tom? <laughs> I got this because I was hoping to do the the Riker on the beach a couple times, go down to uh, Matagorda Bay or something like that and go beach camping with the Riker, but I just never got around to it. I don't know. I might still do that as a farewell if I don't sell this thing quick, like in the next few days. We'll see. All right, trying to catch up. Uh... Oh, yeah, thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I try to show the ups and downs, and it's not always uh, roses and lily fields. Sometimes these things are... Uh, more like landmines, so you just gotta gotta watch out. The main thing I like doing is showing the uh, the progression of ownership. You know, uh, the, the, when you first get it, oh, everything's great. You know, it's the honeymoon phase, uh, and then after you live with it for a little while, okay, what are the annoyances? What uh, what really wears on your nerves? What's uh, you know what's annoyance? What's showstopper? That kind of thing, and then getting into the the mods and the upgrades what works and what doesn't, because if my trials and tribulations and silly spending and, you know, lack of impulse control, <laughs> if those lessons can help other people not waste their money, then hey, great, you know, uh, job well done. If I can prevent someone else from uh, making a fairly critical or expensive error, then uh, it wasn't all in vain. So yeah, I rode uh, Tom's uh, F3, but he's got the full tour one. I think I would go for the uh, sporty one. But yeah, that thing's a rocket ship, it's awesome. Uh, look upstairs in the, look in the closet, laundry area. I might have to go off camera and go find my wallet so somebody can go get food. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm trying to catch up. Uh, Brent, hey buddy, trying to catch up on comments here. Colton, hey, uh, I work for myself, so I work when I want. Uh, the bad thing about that is when I'm not working, I ain't making money, so I ain't making money right now. But this needs done. Uh, I would rather get this out of my hair. It's been sitting on the back burner for over two years. It needs to be done. Uh, fascinated the ability to travel as much as I do, sole provider. Um, I'm a independent network consultant. I, uh, I've been doing this for 37 plus years. Uh, started out as a data center engineer. Uh, I build uh, uh, data centers and wide area networks, uh, work with NASDAQ and a lot of the banking and trading industry for about a decade. And uh, got out of that and just went private. So I, did, I didn't like a red tape and corporate mentality. Uh, Mads World, yes, I did get the truck fixed somewhat. It's out there. Um, it's not 100% fixed, but the coolant leak is gone. Uh, it still needs a serious descaling, de-rusting uh, coolant flush. So that's what it's doing right now. It's got detergent in it, and we're running it for about 300 miles. I'm going to take it back to them, 
Uh, they fixed it for free uh, because of my troubles. Great, is you know the the owner over there uh, was very good about it, and he was pretty embarrassed that his employee was doing the crap that he was doing. So that guy's no longer there. Anyway, uh, uh, F3S, yeah, yeah, yeah. F3S is a monster. Anyway, um, limited for Turing. Yep, you got it. Cool. All right, I'm gonna get to it here. More questions about the Riker. <clears throat> what I could tell anybody that's uh, considering a Riker. Get the, uh, if, if you're getting the extended warranty, be sure that it's actually serviced. Did you find it? Yep. Okay. This one, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, be sure that that warranty is actually serviced by BRP and not some third party company because apparently the best warranty, B E S T, whatever that stands for, I still don't know. Uh, I could come up with some really nasty acronyms real quick. Um, they don't cover squat. So, you're really wasting your money. I bought a, was it a couple year extended warranty for this thing? It was $2,200 or something. It's a lot of money. Uh, and they never covered anything, man. Nothing. The only things that were covered on this were factory recall items. Everything else Can Am uh, writes off as a uh, uh, wear item, and they do not cover it. Um, now, with that being said, I'll spill part of the beans on my Can-Am experience. Uh, the rest of it will have to be for uh, quasi members only or you know the, the raw channel, whatever. Um, early on, uh, the problems that I had with this were related to technical errors uh, and omissions in the service manual, or the owner's manual, sorry, not service manual, uh, and some other things. And I was calling them out, and I've got an engineering background, and Can-Am figured that out real fast. And they got on the phone with me, and uh, you know, they obviously knew who I am, where I live. They've got the, the owner information on this thing. Uh, they know where it's registered and all that. So they figured out where I was real quick. And then I didn't even, uh, you know, my, my YouTube account or my, you know, Quasi Motard account was not affiliated with this, you know, the named owner on this. So they figured out who I was real quick, gave me a call. <laughs> and how shall, shall I say it? Uh, in no uncertain terms, they wanted to shut me up. They wanted to keep some of the issues quiet while they worked them out in the background. Uh, they updated their owner's manual immediately within like 24 to 48 hours and published a new owner's manual to address some of the deficiencies and omissions. And uh, they arranged a conference call with the lead engineer uh, at BRP that designed this platform. And uh, we had a good call. I mean, at that time, it seemed like they were pretty proactive about uh, wanting to fix the issues and, you know, address the owners concerns and complaints and stuff like that uh, and at one point it seemed like they were actually going to buy the Riker off of me just comp it and let me keep it or whatever uh, but I realized pretty quickly that that was in an effort to silence me and I didn't like that that didn't seem very forthright or honest in my opinion uh, and it was pretty obvious that that partnership was going to come with a lot of compromises you know NDAs all kinds of stuff like that uh, and I don't know, I have a little problem with that, especially if it's a safety related issue. I think people should know about it, especially when the manufacturer is not addressing it. And I'll have you know that I've only gotten two recall notices for this thing in all of my ownership for it. And they were both late by like two years plus, uh, myself and one other, uh, Can-Am Riker owner, one of my subscribers on the channel, sent me a notice early on uh, when my son ran this fender into the back of a truck and I had to have it replaced, uh, had the light replaced. The uh, wiring harness inside the fender well here was not secured properly and we could tell that it was starting to chafe. And uh, it was just fortuitous timing that one of my channel members uh, sent me a note saying, hey, check your wheel harnesses because I'm getting VSS faults due to wiring issues. And this is early on. I mean, this is like not even three months into owning this thing. So we're talking, what, March, May, March or April uh, of 2019. And we knew about these wiring issues. We contacted Can-Am, we showed it to them, uh, and I came up with the idea to have the guys drill uh, some small holes in the plastic ribs underneath the fender and just zip tie up those wires, get them out of the way of the tire. So mine had done. 
just now, literally four weeks ago, I received a recall, a federal safety recall, saying wiring harnesses can fail and cause VSS faults and blah, 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 and this and that. Really? Four years later? Come on. This has been a known issue for a very long time. Uh, the only other recall notice that I got, again, long after it was already done, was the uh, wheel nut recall where the wheel nuts were splitting and separating and, you know, potentially making your wheel fall off the bike. We knew about this uh, only because the dealers told us at a routine service interval. We never received any mailings, nothing. Uh, so I took mine in and they said, no, yours isn't under that recall. And uh, i to make sure I'm still on here. Test, test. Yeah, sorry, audio, I thought it dropped out. Anyway, uh, we thought that uh, it wasn't under because the VIN numbers didn't fall in, so no problem. I took this thing on several long, multi-thousand mile road trips and uh, went back like a year later or something like that for a routine service. Uh, I, it was actually when I went up to Tyler uh, to uh, Broadway Motorsports, those guys that really screwed up the alignment horribly. Uh, they said, oh yeah, uh, your bike is under a recall. It's been that way for you know six or eight months or whatever because the wheel nuts were finally under recall even for mine. So here I am going thousands of miles around the country on this thing and Can-Am knew about the issue, but my bike wasn't officially recalled and I never received a notice for that until a year and a half later, 18 months later. I could have been dead under a truck off the side of a bridge, no wheel, come on man. These are safety issues. Anyway, so my experience with Can-Am as far as their customer service and uh, how shall we say forthrightness uh, toward their customers is not very cool. Uh, and especially considering all the issues that the first gen owners have had on their Rikers with various things like the handlebars coming loose and falling off at highway speeds and you know crazy stuff like that. Can-Am has not gone back uh, and retroactively fix that uh, or addressed it for their early buyers, early adopters. Uh, it was something that had to be fixed out of pocket. Same with the alignment issues and all the other stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's on you, man. It's your dime, it's out of your pocket. They don't care. Uh, and that is just, that's horrible, man. They're addressing it for the newer Rikers because they're still under, you know, initial factory warranty. Uh, and it looks bad from a PR perspective to uh, have brand new machines failing and wiring harnesses going bunko and all kinds of stuff with people ending up with their brand new bikes sitting at the shop. They're making payments on the damn thing and they can't ride it for three months, six months plus. Ask Thrill Mouse Moto uh, or a couple of the other guys about their experiences. So in my opinion, Can-Am's got a couple of pretty big black eyes uh, and I don't know. Again, that was I knew about some of these problems and uh, the whole idea of me being quiet about it in return for them buying the bike or, you know, comping me or making me a brand ambassador or something like that, that just seemed kind of slimy. I don't think so. If I bought it with my money, I'm entitled to my opinion. And if anybody else wants to listen, they're entitled to my opinion too. <laughs> but it's all voluntary, you know. We, th these are, for lack of a better term, uh, they're power sports, they're toys for some people. For people that need transportation and you know rely on them as a primary mode of transport uh, or you're operating them on the highways and dense city traffic like I do, uh, those safety issues can literally be life-threatening. I mean, if this bike decides to do something stupid in the middle of the road because the CVT blows up on the highway, <clears throat> ask me how I know, um, suddenly you don't have motivation and you're in 70 mile an hour, 80 mile an hour traffic and you're nothing but a sitting duck for uh, all the crazy cagers that are speeding around you going to 85, 90 miles an hour. So it's life threatening. Uh, the handling issues with mine wandering all over the road uh, it's very difficult to keep this thing in one lane sometimes. And, uh, you know, you're in dense city traffic shoulder to shoulder with other cars. Hey, that's a safety issue, man. If anybody's car or truck behaved that way, it would be recalled immediately. There's no way that there wouldn't be a, a national highway safety uh, recall, safety uh, on that. Just crazy. Imagine buying a new car or truck and every time you hit a bump, 
or even just going down the road where there's a little crown in the road, suddenly the thing wants to lane change on you. That's not acceptable behavior. But I was told by Can-Am and by a lot of the uh, initial you know, people in the, the groups, oh no, that's normal, it's because it's a three-wheel vehicle. Bullshit, I've driven plenty of three-wheel vehicles, plenty of uh, spiders for that matter, uh, three-wheeled cars, uh, you name it. They don't do that. They shouldn't do that. If they do that, they got problems. But anyway, I can harp on it forever, right up until I get rid of it. And then I don't have anything to harp about anymore. Ugh. I'll come back to comments in a second. Ugh. I feel really bad for uh, some of the, the owners that have just never seen resolution to the, uh, the wiring harness issues, uh, VSS faults, steering angle sensor, yaw sensor. The yaw sensors were a big deal for a long time, but I think everyone's kind of coming around now realizing it wasn't only the yaw sensors, it was probably more the steering angle uh, because of the, the silly plastic potentiometer that it's got there that gets stressed and broken or whatever. So, but uh, Thrill Mouse uh, ended up without his for an extremely long time. And even now he's not able to ride it years later because uh, every time he makes a, a turn, like a left or a right turn, it throws a VSS fault and goes into limp mode. So he can't take it any distance unless he wants to get stuck returning to home base at 35 miles an hour. Again, a safety hazard, a safety issue, not cool. But with all that being said, mine doesn't have those problems. I have had the, uh, the VSS uh, limiter. I don't get a, an error message up on the, the dash that's VSS fault, but it's the, the traction nanny getting in the way when I go around, uh, what is it, right-hand corners. Uh, the, the ignition cuts and I feel the outside brakes kicking in, even when I'm not going around the corner fast. So that's the steering angle sensor problem. and. Uh, you know, again, Can-Am is supposed to have an update for that. I don't know how much it costs, but it's certainly not being covered under warranty or under a recall. And that is uh, my chief reason for getting rid of the Riker. Uh, if their warranty service, if their support had been better, uh, a little bit more honest and equitable toward their owners that purchase their products, uh, then I would be willing to put a little more money in this thing and see if I could finally locate that magic bullet that fixes this thing's handling problem. Uh, but yeah, no, not really, not interested now. They had their chances multiple times. So they just lost a, what would have been a loyal repeat customer. I mean, everybody knows how much I like Honda and every manufacturer's got their bumps and bruises, but uh, at least if those problems are being addressed and it's not, outright rape on the customer, you know, making the customer foot the bill for all these manufacturing defects or uh, whatever the problem is, then it's something you can hang on to or get behind, but not to, not when you got to pay for all the manufacturer screw ups that should have been covered under warranty or a recall. I've forgotten to answer comments. I do apologize. I will be there momentitos. <laughs> Washing the wheels on this thing is always fun because you got to roll it forward and back and forward and back to clear the uh, the fenders to get inside the wheels. Ugh, I'm wet. Okay, what do we got? Yep, Heather on wheels. Steering position sensors. Yep. I know. Everybody knows it. Everybody's been there. It's unfortunate. Uh, clay, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't really decided yet. And ow, I just separated my fingernail and it's bleeding. Owie. Um, I don't know. Again, I was kind of interested in getting an F3S, but after my really crappy Can-Am ownership experience, I'm not really interested in getting any more Can-Am or BRP products. Uh, I was talking about that in the vlog the other day. I don't remember if I published it or not, but uh, I was actually thinking about getting uh, Sea-Doo boat, uh, either the runabouts, you know, the wave runner or the, uh, the bigger boat boat. Uh, but it's Can-Am, it's BRP. You're going to have the same warranty problems. And I said that early on with uh, 
my early ownership experience on this thing, I was like, you know, I expected this out of a boat. Everyone kind of understands that a boat is nothing but a hole in the water that you throw money into. So when I owned uh, Sea-Doo products in the past, which is BRP, uh, and they had really expensive maintenance and, you know, issues that you had to repair all the time. Okay, that's just part of owning a boat, right? I, I can deal with that. When it's a road-going vehicle, that absolutely should not have those problems. It's a little different story. Ah. See what I'm missing? I'm doing this with wet hands and it's not working that great. Hey, Mike G, what's up? I'm going backwards, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Mike is in, hey Mike. Mine is only covered with Mountain Motorsports. Interesting, so third party warranty, I'm guessing. Uh, that, uh, Derek, hey Derek, what's it going, buddy? Trying to catch up. I'm skipping all over the place. Uh, Can Am Maverick side by side. Yeah, and have you seen the price on those things? I don't. I don't think those things are in many people's budgets. I mean, owning a big side by side like that, whether it's the uh, you know the Honda Talons or the Mavericks or the Polaris uh, Rangers or whatever they're called. You've got to have a pretty specific ownership case to make those make sense. You have to have a lot of land or access to land where you can drive them, ride them, whatever. Or you've got to live in a state that's very lenient about using those on the road. Uh, you get out into uh, Alabama, parts of Arkansas, Missouri, uh, very rural ag agrarian states, and you'll see four-wheelers and you know quads and side-by-sides and stuff like that on the road pretty frequently. It's not a big deal. Uh, whether it's legal or not, or just tolerated or not, I don't really know what the difference is there because I haven't lived there. But anyway, uh, when you're talking about a $30,000 off-road four-wheeler, you got to have some disposable income and a place to ride that. It's crazy. Not like you're using that to commute to work. Yes, you are. you got a cool job. It's cooler than mine, man. I'm in the wrong industry, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, so now what are the other scrub down issues that I've got? I've got stuff under the wheel well here. Always go for the dirtiest bits last. I still had fun with this thing. I, I just got to where I had to be in a very specific mood to ride it. Uh, and tolerate its problems and you know the handling issues on it. Otherwise, I just got pissed off and it would ruin my day. Uh, if I was in the mood to be aggressive and terrorize traffic a little bit, yeah, Riker's fun for that. Uh, but the fact that you've always got to be maintaining this thing's trajectory on like a tenth of a second update basis just to keep it in the lane, that's not cool, man. It's extremely exhausting, mentally and physically. So I couldn't really use it for my road trips uh, and the other, you know, fun stuff that I like to do. I like to uh, take adventures, going places, not just back and forth and definitely not just to the coffee shop or back and forth to work. I want to get out, you know, camp, adventure, uh, take it off road, you know, a little bit. And this one was supposed to be off roady, which it kind of is, but I mean, you got to be realistic. It's only got about four and a half inches of ground clearance up there to that nose. And you don't want to take a rock or a stick in that radiator because that's going to cost you four or five hundred bucks to fix. And then uh, the rally mode on this thing was a huge disappointment because what I had understood from all their marketing literature and especially their very deceptive uh, commercials. I don't know if any of you remember the uh, the initial Can Am uh, Riker commercials where they're showing the the couple riding out in the desert or on the salt flats or whatever it is and uh, the guy's doing uh, a drift donut around the the other Riker rider in the middle bullshit they must have turned off that traction control because this thing will not do that it won't even if you go in rally mode it won't do it you can get a drift started and you've got to be very 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 careful about the throttle position and your steering angle because if you just barely bump your throttle or rapidly adjust your steering angle to maintain your drift, the nanny immediately shuts you down, even in rally mode. I've got that one on video multiple times. I mean, it's a stability thing, sure, but what the hell is rally mode for? It's supposed to 
get out there and drift in the desert, right? <laughs> marketing, marketing. Caveat emptor. All right, I'm gonna get a towel. Squeaky shoes. My shoes, they're wet, so they're squeaking. Did you order what you wanted with Josh? Did you order what you wanted with Josh? Well, call him on the phone. He's got a phone. You know that little supercomputer that you hold in your hand to look at TikTok that makes phone calls too. Yeah, I'm a dick. That's true though, right? Come on. Common sense. Got to kick in somewhere. Okay, sorry. Where am I going? Uh, forward controls for the Rebel T-Rex. Yeah, T-Rex controls for the Rebel are kind of fugly. They're very industrial looking. Uh, the really nice ones for the Rebel are the uh, Depreto Moto out of Italy. They're expensive. They're like 650 bucks, but ooh, they're gorgeous. Okay, Mike, sorry, I'm catching up. I'm way behind. I'm trying to catch up. I'm 10 minutes behind on this stuff. Yeah, thousand ma the rebel. Yeah, agreed. Uh, last time I had at the shop, telling the Rob fuel assembly from a ski Yeah, yeah. Uh, Heather, that's another one. Sorry, I'm so late on the comments. Um, I think you and I talked about that a couple years ago, when uh, everyone was complaining about the fuel pump whine on these things. Mine still does it, and uh, Can Am knows about it. They they knew about it for all Riker owners at the time, it, was, it affected all the 2019 and 2020 models. And it was due to uh, a supplier problem that they had. Uh, it was a bad quality uh, fuel pump motor. And basically when it's really hot outside or the bike is you know heated up, it whines and the bearings on it can actually fail. And so that means your fuel pump fails. Okay, well great, what if it fails on you when you're on the highway? Been down this path, you're a road hazard. It's, it's a, a potential life-threatening issue. But Can-Am's posture on that was they're not going to replace anyone's bad or suspect fuel pump until it fails, instead of just covering it under warranty. Now that's the first manufacturer I've ever heard of in my 52 years, you know, 46 years worth of buying my own vehicles on the roads, that a manufacturer has not addressed a fuel pump issue as part of a federal safety recall. That is a safety issue. It's a federal item. It has to be covered. So how can AM is not getting slapped with class actions on that? I don't know. I don't know. But they still haven't addressed it for this. And it hasn't failed, so, you know. I'm not saying that it has. It's just a curious wild card to worry about, you know. You hear it whining, it's super, super loud. And like, okay, is this thing about to self-destruct on me? What's going on? And then the next time you start it, it's fine until it heats up and then it starts doing it again. Some people thought that it was due to fuel level, whatever. Nah, it's really temperature related. It's always when it's hot. Uh, trying to catch up. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. Well, I think I am, if I can get all the comments. There we go. Yes. Yes, you nearly, okay, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, Heather. Yeah, it's just bad customer service in my opinion. Uh, and, you know, all those issues combined with the fact that they tried to shut me up uh, when I was airing some of their dirty laundry on the Riker when it was brand new, because I was probably one of the first people, if not the first one that was doing Riker content on YouTube. Uh, and it, I didn't really start out with that intention. It just kind of happened that way because of the, uh, empty gearbox issue, uh, you know, the oil level in the gearbox not being correct. And uh, I recorded those first couple of videos as a cover my ass, you know, a CYA on the, uh, the gearbox issue. And that's where the technical errors were in the owner's manual on how to check it and verify and everything else. And it turned out that mine was like barely half filled. So anyway, those videos are the ones that took off, and uh, that's what made Can-Am reach out to me and try to go, shh, 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 keep him quiet, make him happy. Mm. How about just fix the problem? Fix the problem and I would have been a happy camper. Don't try to buy my silence, that's pretty cheesy, man.
my plastic hasn't turned like ashy on this thing yet, but it's kind of starting to get there. Uh, I kept it under a cover for a really long time, but the cover kept blowing off and uh, I wasn't putting it on. So now it's starting to get a little bit of sun fade. I'm probably gonna go get some of that uh, Mother's Back to Black or whatever it is, Meguiar's Back to Black, I can't remember which brand that is, uh, and uh, go over all the plastics and make her look purdy again. Get most of the water off here so at least it doesn't spot up. And I'll get back to comments. Yeah, these things are fun, uh, but in my tenure of owning this, uh, I'll say that uh, I would really only consider the Riker to be a short term or short distance uh, fun machine, you know little weekend jaunts here and there, maybe a couple hundred miles. Uh, but I don't think that I would recommend it to anybody as a primary machine, whether it be for commuting or touring or whatever, because it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't meet muster for those chores. Uh, the fuel economy on it's horrible as a commuter. Uh, my lifetime average on this thing is 29, I think. Even when I ride it real nice, you know, 55, 60 miles an hour, which you can't do in Houston. Uh, I get 31 or 32 out of it. That's it. The best I've ever seen on any extended highway trip was 35. And that was a pretty rare case because I was riding with a bunch of uh, small bikes, you know, mini motos and scooters. And I did about a full tank at uh, 50 to 55 miles an hour. And I got like 38 miles to the gallon out of it or something like that. But I mean, if you're getting 29 miles to the gallon, 30 miles to the gallon, let's just say average, out of a motorcycle, a 900cc motorcycle, no less. Drive a car, Jesus. You can't lean this thing, you can't split with it. You can't split lanes, you can't do a whole lot of stuff with it that is motorcycle centric. So why are you subjecting yourself to the, the elements and the torture of uh, commuting and the heat and traffic and all that if you can't get those motorcycle benefits? And one of those is fuel economy. <laughs> it's not efficient, not at all. All right, back to comments. I apologize. I'm ranting again. Ugh. All right, I think that's most of the water spots. Now it's time to polish it up. Greed, yes, indeed, sir. Greed and just piss poor customer service. Brent, that's a great thought. Um, in fact, Honda has come out with uh, several concept vehicles that have gone to the Tokyo Motor Show and stuff like that for the last, I don't know, seven or eight years. Uh, so it's not a new concept. The one that everybody was pretty interested in was essentially a Goldwing quad. So it's a four wheel Goldwing. Uh, and I think they made a one that was slightly smaller that actually leaned. I don't know, I don't remember if the, uh, uh, the Goldwing version leaned or not, but Honda does have some uh, four wheelers or quadricycles that have got a tilting mechanism in it. So that could be kind of cool because then you kind of get the, the feel of motorcycling, but the stability of multiple wheels. Uh, I don't know. If it were Honda, I'd probably buy one. All right, going backwards. Uh, fail on their presence. Hey, you got 53 people in here. Chime up, everybody. Who's got questions? Didn't realize I had 53 people. Uh, Mike, uh, questions on the warehouse. Uh, it's coming along pretty good. I, I posted one or two little ones, uh, just, you know, kind of the front edge of cleaning stuff up. I haven't really done anything in there yet as far as uh, video presentation or production because it's just a pigsty. I mean, I've got stuff so scattered and covering the floors. So I have to like dance around stuff and wear shin guards to not beat myself up. <laughs> it's bad. Um, but I have uh, some solid progress on it. I've been thinning the stuff down and at least categorizing and getting it to where it can be moved out, sold, given away, whatever. Uh, and then uh, I've got some stuff on order to build my kitchen area, uh, put in a you know kitchen countertop. I'm gonna redo, I've got a, one of those uh, industrial deep well sinks in there, you know, plastic wash basin, whatever you wanna call it. That's gonna come out. Uh, I'll put in a proper, uh, you know, two bay uh, stainless steel kitchen sink, a countertop, uh, some cabinets above, some appliances, uh, refrigerator, some other stuff, uh, and I'm gonna, rebuild one long wall to be 
man cave central, and then the rest of it's going to be storage for the bikes and work area and stuff like that. So that'll be cool. Uh, da, 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 where am I going? What else did I miss? Robert. Hey, Robert. Yeah, yeah, and again, that's, I think, part of the reason they were trying to shut me up early on. I don't mean ill toward anyone. I don't, I don't really harbor any ill will toward people, but the corporation can kiss my ass. Uh, the people that I talked to were, were nice, but the overall mentality was uh, keep him quiet, get him on an NDA to where he can't say anything bad or whatever. And I ruffled some feathers, apparently, when I had that call, the, the engineering call, with the uh, designer of the platform. And he was a, a very technically knowledgeable guy, of course. He's you know engineer that, uh, I don't know if he was the designer or the lead engineer for uh, designing this platform, but uh, he had a little bit of an attitude uh, and was trying to tell me that I was wrong on so many different uh, assumptions that he is, well, he thought they were assumptions. They were observations on my part, and they all turned out to be 100% accurate, uh, as time has told. <laughs> but it's like, you know, this could have been done this way. This should have been done this way. This is absolutely bad. This needs to be fixed. And, you know, I had a, a list of about 20 different major bullet items. And, you know, by the end of the conversation, they realized that I was on point, and I wasn't just, you know, fishing or bashing or whatever. I mean, these are legitimate mechanical issues and, you know, safety concerns that should be addressed. And uh, I don't know where we went off the rails, but apparently they thought that entire conversation was in strict confidence when my entire attention or my intention for it was to report back to the community and particularly to the Spider Lovers Forum. So that's really why I embarked on that whole thing. And I got nothing but bashed and kicked in the nuts left and right from not only Can-Am, but the people over in the Spider Lovers Forum. So I was like, you can both take a chunk, man. This is a bunch of crap, man. A bunch of nasty people, both sides. Anyway, you know, always shoot the messenger. Bearer of bad news, right? Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, which industry, Derek? Consulting? Yeah. I miss being able to whore myself out for 5000 a day. That doesn't happen anymore. Wall Street and capitalist control. Yep, yeah, that's about true. Uh, trying to catch up. <laughs> yeah, I did give myself the day off. That's right. I was going to do some work, and I've got plenty of stuff waiting on me, but eh, this needs done. Uh, okay, trying to catch up. Wing hasn't moved since the storm. Oh, man, you got to get those uh, back on the road or fixed or covered or something. Uh, okay, trying to catch up. Hey, Derek is a new member. I thought you were already a member, Derek. Must have fallen off somehow. That's all right. I always appreciate you being in here, man. Uh, idle fixed and the trans working on a Honda. Ah, yeah, um, kind of, sort of. The transmission is fixed. Uh, it was a computer glitch that was preventing it from being reset and relearning the DCT. Uh, I don't know what they finally did to get it fixed, but they went through that process, uh, he said, four or five times, and finally they got it to where it would re-engage. Uh, but it was dead stick for a week, pretty much. They did not find uh, the idle hang issue. Uh, it's still doing it when the weather is really, really hot. Uh, I've had a couple of ride vlogs with it, and I showed, you know, kind of, it's it's hard to hear and to, to notice on video, but as I'm slowing down, once I get below about 20 miles an hour, I can let off the throttle, and the thing is maintaining a speed, and it's not slowing down by itself. It's not decelerating. So that means the throttle plates are sticking open, or the throttle position sensor's bad, or something's going on, but I actually have to fight it with the brakes to stop. And if I let off of the brakes, it will actually resume speed, like the cruise control is stuck on or something, but it's not the cruise control. So it's annoying. And then once I finally get stopped, it's fine because it realizes the bike isn't moving in the throttle uh, throttle tube or you know the throttle position sensor up here on top is closed so it's not engaging the clutches but once you get rolling again it resumes that same weird attitude where it's trying to self-run uh, Derek yes I do I got a ton the problem is they're expensive to ship but if you want to figure out shipping I'll uh, get you some I've got a ton of servers. Uh, most of them are, you know, probably four to five years old, but they're still plenty good for virtualization. Uh, most of them are anywhere from 64 gig to 512 gig of RAM, uh, SAS backplanes in them. I've got some storage servers. I got a bunch of stuff. So yeah, let me know what you're after. Shoot me an email.
the last I counted, I've got uh, 74 servers on the rack. Uh, exploring with Eden. Hey, how's it going, man? Rusty Riker hubs, you know, that's my next uh, bit. I was waiting for it to kind of dry out a bit. I'll get the camera down here on level with it and show you. It's grody, man. And I even brought uh, some penetrating oil and uh, Scotch-Brite pad to get in there and scrub. Let me get caught up on comments. I'll take you down to the to the dirt. Justice, no, no, uh, the pilot was totaled. It was a complete loss. It was like $26,000 in damage or something like that, way more than the vehicle was worth. So uh, Geico wrote me a, a check to cover it. It, you know, it was a low ball offer, but we took it. We just needed to pay some bills because I wasn't working for a while after that accident. I got mangled up enough to where I had to take a month and change off and go to physical therapy and some other stuff for my shoulder and my back. Uh, and I still haven't gotten the uh, injury claim settled out with Geico yet, but you know, maybe one of these days I'll be rich and I'll buy a new car. <laughs> Uh, electric bikes, Mark. Yeah, uh, I don't know. They're they're just runarounds. I mean, you can figure probably seventy or eighty mile range. So they're trying hard to compete with zero, and zero has been in the game a lot longer as far as track record on electric vehicles. So I would definitely steer clear of the electric Can Ams for at least a few years until they get their bugs worked out. <laughs> when we weren't driving computers, you got that right. Sure, man. Yeah, Derek. Let me know what you uh, what you're in for. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of servers, mostly two U and uh, well, one U and two U servers. Uh, I've got a few larger format ones and a few short half rack format, uh, but most of them are uh, standard length, you know, standard rack uh, one U servers. Sorry about the camera work. I'm trying to get this stupid thing to unlock. There we go. Fighting me. Take you down here on work on level with the work. Close your eyes, you won't get seasick. Yeehaw. Okay. Here is a rusty Riker hub. And they all do this. Uh, I don't know if Can Am ever fixed it with the uh, newer ones. But for the 2019s and 2020s, it's just steel. I'm going to get some light to where you can see in there a little better. Steel, no anodizing, no rust proofing, nothing. First time it gets wet, it rusts. Let me just tell you a little bit about how happy I was when that happened to me. My very first Riker bath, and I got it on camera. I, I videoed the process. First bath, I was so proud of my new toy. I washed it, I waxed it, I covered it with a towel and a diaper and polished it. It was so nice. And I came outside about two hours later and saw this shit. You gotta be kidding me, man. I don't know how well that comes out on camera. Just rusty, rusty, rusty. It's friggin' horrible, man. So right up until that point, you know, you got these cool aircraft uh, looking lug nuts on here, you know, hollow, it's F1 style. Man, that's so cool, isn't that neat? And then it turns to rabid shit. Ew. And the only way to fix it is to uh, scrub it out with some Scotch Brite or some triple aught, quad aught stainless steel, something like that that's not highly abrasive, and uh, hit it with penetrating oil or some oil film, something like that, uh, just to you know keep it from rusting. But as soon as you wash it again or you run through the rain, guess what? Right back where you were. Sorry comments. Heather, yes I did. <laughs> it comes out well on camera unfortunately. No, there's no no covers on these because it's supposed to look cool and open and you know when they aren't rusted they look really slick. I'll show you the inside of the steering knuckle. It's even worse. They just they don't bother painting them, coating them, anodizing them, nothing. It's, it's sad. It's a sad state of affairs for any engineer. You look at it and go, well, why? Heather, yes, I did create the channels. Uh, one of them is uh, quasi raw altogether, one word, Q U A S I R A W. Uh, so on YouTube, it's at quasi raw. Uh, I think I've only got one video published on there. I've got a couple more uploaded that 
I just needed to make sure that they were complete and I'll set those to public. And they're just raw videos, you know, stuff that comes off the camera. I throw them through the video encoder to stitch multiple files together and that's it. So there's plenty of F-bombs and uh, not politically friendly content in there. One moment, I've got to get scissors. I want pizza and beer. Can't get beer. Well, he's probably got his fake ID, but he's going to get in trouble with that. You didn't know? He was proud. He showed it to me. I was like, okay, so you're, uh, I think he's an Asian guy or something on the ID. It's so bad. And he's way older than he should be, like 35 or something. I'm like, dude, come on. Anybody can look at you and know you're not 35. I don't care if you're Asian. Yes, Asian people age well, but they don't age that well. <laughs> Come on, cut. Oh, cut. Cut. Damn you. I'm live streaming and you're on you're on the uh, audio right now. Oh, goody. You coming out, Grace? Come on. So, yes, you guys heard that correctly. My son has got a a fake ID and he was proud and like showing it off and like <laughs> dumbass you're gonna get busted no i'm not showing this on camera sorry i've got some a little swatch of uh green scotch bright here and i'm just throwing a little penetrating oil on it uh something to emulsify the rust a little bit and the fun you just reach in here and get grody Once you scrub it out, it looks pretty good for a while until it gets wet again. But in order to really get it cleaned up, you have to pull the wheel off, which anybody that's never done that on a Riker, you're in for a treat. You get a, you know, what, 221 pound feet of torque on these nuts. You gotta have a special 63, 68 millimeter socket, whatever that is, uh, and a big ass breaker bar and a big ass torque wrench to put it back on. So it's not a trivial process. I mean, you can su suspend the bike up on uh, uh, jacks or you know whatever. It's not that big a deal to pull the wheel off. Once it's off, you can stable the, stabilize the bike, but getting them off is not easy. I'm just brushing its teeth here. I've done this I don't know how many times. At first, I was using uh, like kitchen sponges. <laughs> that shit didn't work. <laughs> it didn't last more than about, oh, I don't know, eight or ten strokes and said, I give. I quit. Oh, it's looking pretty now. It's so pretty. But I can't get the inside edge. I'll show you the inside edge in a minute. I know this is not that exciting, but you know, what else are you going to do on lunch break? Okay, so that is better. <clears throat> Make it paper towel. I'm going to wipe that out. I'll show, shine the flashlight in there and show it to you. And then I'm going to show you the inside, the steering knuckle, the other side of that hub. And it's horrible. You can't really get to that. I'm hungry. I want pizza. Oh, I want pizza. Ugh. I just need to get a mini keg of uh, Dos Equis. That'd be great. Man, I might do that. I haven't had one of those in forever. I don't have my little beer keg cooler anymore, though. Okay. Ready for the fun? Mmm. And the problem is there's some pitting in there that you just can't get rid of. So there's scale corrosion on the inside of this that just doesn't go away, period. I mean, you'd have to bead blasted or sandblast or something else to get rid of it but it's slightly better than it was at least it's not quite as ugly on the surface Let's see if you guys can get a good look at it so you know it's a little better sorry i'm trying to get you guys in there and not lose the camera so it's it's better but it depends on which angle you're looking at it 
Uh, I can't get you guys low enough, I don't think. No, this tripod's not gonna go that low. If you look straight in, it's still very rusty as you go in the tube there for the uh, uh, spindle, wheel spindle. So anyway, trying to not unhook my cameras. Hopefully I didn't just unhook the camera. Well, here's the, the inside. Look how bad that is in here. You really can't scrub this very easily uh, because of the, uh, the suspension components and all the stuff in here. Uh, I, I just get this outer edge right here and then, uh, you know, try to work on the surface. And you can go after that with a brass brush, but you shouldn't do anything any stiffer or harder than a brass brush because you got, you know, aluminum fittings and, you know, all kinds of stuff here that you're just going to scar up and make look terrible. Uh, so I've used a brass brush on this part before, but yeah, it's just ugly. It's terrible. Engineering faux pas. Anodize it, man. Anodize it. It ain't that hard. Okay, pardon the uh, camera work whilst I extend the legs again. Hey, that didn't come all the way out. There we go. All right. So sorry for seasickness. If anyone has motion sickness, Dramamine. Okay, so back to uh, an overview. And I'm gonna look at comments. Sorry for being away so long. Oh, and I left a comment up there for Heather for too long. Um, okay, what do we got? So, ooh, and like 20 comments just came through. That's odd. Uh, Hylus Barbarium, no, I have not yet. Uh, I'm gonna advertise it. I was talking about it earlier. Uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna have too much of a problem finding someone that's interested in getting it uh, as a, you know, a project bike or commuter or whatever. Uh, mechanically, it's sound. Uh, it has no problems, it's had a major maintenance, so it's good for another, you know, 12 or 20,000 miles, but uh, the erratic steering on it is still a little bit iffy, in my opinion. Uh, there's a steering update kit from Can-Am now, and it's not terribly expensive. It's a couple hundred bucks or something like that, but the labor to put it on isn't going to be cheap. So if you can't do it yourself, then you got to pay for labor, and that sucks because it should just be a factory recall, assholes. Um, <laughs> uh, printed covers or making don't last long. Yes. Uh, and I think the best ones, uh, from what I've understood, is the plastic plumbing fittings. They're like they're made of PVC or something like that. So they're they're not the prettiest, but they don't degrade real quickly. They don't fall apart. Uh, F3 is a much better machine, Conrad. You got that right. Uh, whoops, sorry. Yeah, it's real slow about updating which one I'm touching here. Uh, Eric, offload that pile. Yeah, and you know. Obviously, I can't bash on it too badly if I'm wanting to sell it because then nobody wants to buy it. But, you know, I've been pretty forthright and honest about it. Uh, it's a great machine. It's mechanic reliable, except for the erratic steering that I just can't sort out. Uh, Derek, awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I have to still have to temper my, uh, my urges of what I want to put up there because uh, quasi completely unfiltered can be a little rude. We'll see. I have to make sure I, I don't post anything illegal because uh, I'm not a choir boy. I, I do things that are not nice sometimes. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Nope, they don't put covers on those hubs. They're not even anodized. They just look terrible. Where is it? Okay, cool. Anyway, we've got 46 people in here watching. I'm just goofing off. I uh, saw somebody just join, so welcome for... Uh, Welcome to the uh, Can-Am Riker Farewell Bath. Uh, it's been bathed already, and I'm going through cleaning out the dirty wheel hubs. I can't take you to the other side because my camera cord won't go that far. Uh, but I'm going to go over to the other side of the bike and scrubby scrubby and try to get the ugly scale rust off of the surface. Blah. Penetrating oil. My can is just about out of aerosol. Ah. So, clean this one up, and then I'll put a little thin film of uh, some hypoid gear oil that I've been using 
in there and it does a pretty good job because it's tacky. It's uh, a lot thicker than penetrating oil or uh, uh, like engine oil, you know, it's much thicker than that. So it leaves a pretty good film behind. Uh, I had somebody in the YouTube comments a long time ago leave me a message about uh, oil film or I can't remember what they called it, but it's commonly used in you know, agricultural machines and I guess machine shop stuff. I've just, I've never heard of it or been exposed to it. So I couldn't remember what it was, didn't commit it to memory, but they say apparently it does a really good job of kind of protecting and sealing the metal. And if you get detergent on it or solvents or something, yeah, it'll break down. But for most uh, weather proofing and rust proofing uh, efforts, it does a pretty good job. So I don't know. if I were keeping this, I would probably investigate that. Oh, and I never mentioned the, the one real reason, or the two real reasons, that I, I've kept this thing so long, considering my annoyance at it. Uh, the, the main issue is my middle daughter has a, uh, a leg problem. It's a birth defect that will be with her for her entire life. Uh, and she's not able to ride uh, bicycles and stuff like that because of the leg problem. So my thought was uh, maybe she could ride a three-wheeler and maybe she would like this. But with as much upper body strength as it takes to steer and wrangle this thing, uh, I don't think it's a fit for her. And she said that she doesn't like it anyway. She never really has. Um, so I thought, okay, well, strike one. <laughs> or actually strike two. Strike one is being a miscreant. Strike two is daughter doesn't like it. Uh, but then my youngest daughter, my six-year-old now, she loves this thing. Uh, she likes to ride on it. Uh, she's not really big enough for me to want to put her on the back uh, and trust her to stay put while I rat race around. But when she was littler, I would put her on my lap. I would sit here and uh, she would sit across my lap against the hump right here. And my arms were around her, so there's no, she couldn't fall off. There's nowhere she could go. As long as my hands are on the bar, she's not coming out of this cage. Uh, and she just loved this thing. She just gets a giggle a minute out of it, especially when I hit the throttle and rock it away. So she's sad that I'm getting rid of it, uh, but I don't think I would want to keep it for another, you know, what, almost 10 years where she's old enough to ride it. I don't think so. Anyway, neither here nor there. I'm not always selfish. <laughs> Trying to think of the family, trying to think of anybody else that can have fun with my hobbies. You know, if I can corrupt more people into my, my hobbies, absolutely. I'm the corrupter. It's just lonely doing it by myself all the time. And yes, I'm talking about riding bikes. <laughs> okay, now my hand is orange. I should have shown you on camera before I washed this off, but yeah. I've got orange fingers. They look like I had an argument with a bottle of self-tanner. And let me tell you, ugh, it won, and it's not coming out. <laughs> oh, man. It's, like, really deeply ingrained in my fingerprints and skin. Yep, so now i got three orange fingers. Great. Great. Okay, it's really hot outside. I'm getting really tired of sweating. I think it's about time to start washing the accessories, and uh, I guess I can show you show you guys the stuff. I'll have to turn the bike around so you can see it. Uh, the stuff mounted a little closer, easier. Why don't I do that? If I can find the key. I got all kinds of goodies that are going to go with this, so someone's going to have fun with it for sure. Uh, I've got a, a DinoJet uh, PowerVision 3 programmer. Uh, it's licensed up to this bike and everything. So, I mean, there's, uh, there's a, lot of, a lot of fun toys here. Just don't have time or patience for it anymore. Battery's a little weak. It's been sitting a while. I'm going to put the charger on it.
All right, so where are we on camera? That'll work. Got it in the sun. Cool. Ride with me. Come on out. Where are we going? Uh, he took out a Can-Am rep. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to refill it earlier. I don't have an air compressor here at the house. I left it at the warehouse, but I was going to use another aerosol can to fill it, but the nozzles didn't match up. I didn't want to dick with it. Uh, yes, I, I murdered the Can-Am rep. That's what that was. <laughs> that was my truck. Uh, when it decided to blow the radiator, or not the radiator, the cooling uh, hoses, uh, the hidden one that's going right over the top of the block. It's a, a hard line, not a soft line. So anyway, yeah, I've got to use some muriatic acid and a pressure washer and try to clean that off my driveway. Um, am I going to get the ADV 160? I'm thinking about it. I'm holding out to see if Honda announces the ADV 350 for this market. If not, then yeah, I might get the ADV 160. Uh, okay. So, anywho, for anyone that hasn't seen the uh, Max mount, or sorry, not Max mount, the uh, the pannier mount here on the side, it's great fun, super easy. Uh, it uses the uh, Shad uh, three P system, and this is their E thirty six side case. Uh, I actually had these before I got the Riker uh, for my uh, CB500X. I bought the full 3P system from Shad for that bike. Uh, and it's the exact same box, uh, but the cool thing is I get this fancy carbon fiber lid, unlike the polished one that you get from Can-Am. So anyway, uh, it just pops right on there, super cool. It's got a little uh, guide there and that's it. Mm. Quick on, quick off. It has a you know, storage bag inside. I've got extra of those storage bags that are going to go with it. I have the left side case, obviously, that won't fit this because it's not a symmetric arrangement. Uh, but yeah, anywho, I'm going to clean that up, make it look pretty. Passenger seat. And this was one of my complaints when I talked to the engineer at Can-Am. I was like, you guys realize that you didn't give any ability to lock that on the bike, right? And he said, well, yeah, it's got a locking tab. I said, no, that's a that's a securing tab. That's not a locking tab. There's no way to lock this. This is a $700 seat right here. Once you get the you know, $399 for the seat plus $299 for this folding backrest, that's a $700 seat. And all it takes to walk away with that is to just come over to the bike and uh, this button right here, that's all that locks it in. How do you release it? Uh, you hit the button. If I can find the button. I can't find the button. <laughs> what, did, what did I done did with the button? Here it is. That's it, right there. You reach right through here, kadoink, that's it. So if you're riding with a passenger, you go to a restaurant or whatever, and they hop off, you go inside to eat, and some other jackhole goes walking by your bike and they have a Riker that they haven't ponied up the $700 to buy the passenger seat for, they can just go, oh, neat, cool. Now I've got a seat. See you later. No way to lock it on the bike. And then this is the Max Mount plate. Very dusty. <laughs> Max Mount plate. The Link plate is what they call it. L-I-N-Q. I don't know if that comes out on camera. Link. It fits in the same way. And it's just a, uh, a platform uh, that you can use to mount a dry bag. That's what I used it for on mine. Uh, my touring bag, uh, I would put across the top here, strap it down. But it has these two link mount uh, holes on the sides that are used to attach uh, the watercraft accessories. So you can get a fuel bladder, uh, like a, not a bladder, but a fuel tank, you know, a boat a fuel tank that clips right into this. So does the, the link bag that I'm getting ready to show you. So does the cooler, pretty slick. Neat idea, again. All this stuff is just great ideas, but the execution leaves a lot to be desired because how much is this plate? This plate is $200. Thank you. See you later. 200 bucks for this chunk of plastic and someone can walk away with it that easy. And the engineer said, well, you can put a screw through them to secure them to the bike. Well, okay, great. Yeah, that's, that's just dandy. I'm going to damage the bike. I'm going to damage the accessory by putting a screw through it. Why don't you guys just put a locking barrel on there? You know, come on. How hard is that? Here is the uh, the Link cooler. I showed it earlier, but these uh, whoa hey you don't fall. These uh, trying to get you on camera. Those lock right into those uh, little 
ears on that platform. And I don't remember if it goes forward or backward. I think it goes backward. Do do do. That goes in that side. Yep, that's it. I think, I think. I think, I think. And it locks down. And now that is kind of sort of attached to the bike. It's not the, not the tightest. I don't know if I would want to have a lot of heavy anything in the back of that banging around behind me on my trip, but it's a neat idea. Makes an interesting backrest. Not a very comfortable one, but interesting. <laughs> it's kind of eh, right in the right in your shoulder blades. I don't know if you could turn it around the other way. I haven't tried. Wouldn't make much difference. Let's try, shall we? Get in there. Yeah, fits the other way too. Is that any more comfortable? Mm. No, same. <laughs> but this direction, you can, oh man, I just scuffed this. Now I gotta wash it again. Yeah, but you, you can reach for your beer while you're riding. <laughs> See, I'm a bad influence. Don't listen to me. Okay. And then the little link bag does the same thing. I had a smaller version of this originally. I wasn't really a fan of it. I gave it away to another Riker owner uh, on my uh, Red Dirt Rikers uh, meetup. Uh, but it's the same story. It's got the the same plate it just fits in there and it's so small that it's really not feasible for much of anything and they're not really that waterproof uh, they tend to get a lot of water in them they've got this uh, if it shows up well on camera i'll pull it off there and show it to you but they've got this you know a little zip top thing but if you're in a heavy rain it's going to get soaked inside this uh, and these are actually made for the watercraft uh, to, you know, store gear or whatever on the back of them. But of course, they're going to get totally soaked and waterlogged when you're on a uh, watercraft. So they're not really made to be waterproof. So again, a lot of these uh, pieces, they're just reusing from their watercraft line and they're not really bespoke or designed to be used in a, a road going application. Uh, so it's like they didn't really think a lot of the stuff through. It's nice being able to reuse a parts bin and come up with neat accessories and stuff, but the physical layout of this is pretty much useless for anything except rain gear and maybe a lunch. Uh, you can't put a laptop in there. You can't put work stuff in there. You're lucky to get a pair of sneakers in that thing. Uh, oh, and then my Madstad windshield is going to go with it because obviously I won't need a Madstad screen without the Riker. Uh, but this is quick detach. Uh, it fits on little bobbins that are on the front uh, gauge pod up there and uh, it raises and lowers and you can adjust the rake forward back on it. Pretty cool. Great windscreen. Awesome touring aid. And what else? Oh, the factory uh, tank bag. I took the bra off that uh, attaches this thing, but it's essentially a magnetic uh, attachment right in here. Uh, that clips it onto the bra and then it's got two safety retainer straps that hold it on there and uh, this is the one thing that I thought they did a really good design on but fell short in a couple of aspects the neat thing was when this is mounted you can't get your fuel lid open all you do is pop it off of the uh, magnets and it sits down here and lets the fuel door slide right over the top of it it's really slick the, that was just beautiful engineering where they fell way short is with these magnetic purse clasp things uh, when you get up to 70, 75 miles an hour on the highway, you get enough of a vacuum lifting up on this that it pops the straps open and this thing flips open right into your face. And I've had it on camera dozens of times where I'm riding along and it just flips up and it's covering the camera. And whatever you have in here is going to get vacuumed out. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, the other thing they fell real short on this is, okay, it's angled down like this in its normal mounted position. Great, right? Sure, fine, okay. You got a pocket, yeah, so anything that is loose is gonna be contained, right? Right, mm -mm, no. They needed another piece kind of over the top of this because when you open it up or flip it up or whatever, everything's gonna dump out of the top of it into the lid and then you're still fighting to find things. The worst part about it is when you open this, there's no retainer. They needed one of these mesh nets at the interior bottom edge here, because whatever you've got in here, as soon as you open that thing from the bottom, all your shit falls out on the ground. Ask me how I know. Uh, if they had made this to where it zipped down from the top, it would have made more sense because this would have then retained the items in here. So anyway, 
they, they weren't thinking this through when they designed it. Uh, it. It's got two or three major shortcomings. Don't recommend it. I don't even know if they sell this particular uh, tank bag anymore. Anywho, uh, back to questions, and I'm going to eat. So where are we going? Secretariat. Get rid of that thing. Ah, I'm getting rid of it. He won't. Oh, I'm getting rid of it. I'm getting rid of it. Uh, trade it in. Don't let all that stuff go with it because they will. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe that's what Heather's talking about. No, I'm not giving that stuff away to the dealer. Hell no. Uh, if all this stuff goes with it, then that's going to be a private party sale where uh, I'm at least going to get some value out of it. Um, the suspension is really the biggest, most expensive thing. Is I can't remember what I paid. $2,200, I think, for the Elka Stage 3s. Uh, or stage four, sorry, they're not stage threes. Three of them, but stage four. Uh, and I still have the original suspension that came off of it right here in the Elka box. Uh, and this, uh, here's the rear shock, for example. And this would be good, you know, if I do sell it with the suspension on there, the rally stuff uh, only had, I don't know, three or 4,000 miles on it, so it's still very fresh. Uh, and that would be a good upgrade for anyone else's uh, 600 or 900 ace non-rally uh, be a good upgrade because these are decent uh, the rear is adjustable for uh, it's a combined compression and rebound damping it's not independent so you get both in one knob uh, and that's okay uh, you do have uh, spring preload on this uh, threaded collar here that you can mess with uh, the front ones are not damping adjustable at all they're just uh, preload adjust so or spring preload i should say but anyway if i trade this in at a dealer this stuff is going back on there. The expensive stuff is coming off. All right, I'm going to take you indoors uh, and I'm going to eat. Let's see what we got here. Last minute questions before I start shoving pizza in my face. Oh, God, it's hot out there. Did we see how hot it is? I'm quite sure it's uh, over 100 degrees. Man, I'm going to go look. Did you get drinks? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Beer would have been better, but I don't want to get him in trouble. Holy hell. Yeah, I'm going to bring the camera out here and show that. Uh, it's 104 in the shade under my gazebo. One oh four outside, ladies and germs. That's crazy. OK. Um, no, Roy, still working on it. Uh, it's uh, cleaned up now. I'm going to polish it up, make it look pretty, take a bunch of pictures, and try to sell it soon. Hopefully this week. We'll find out. Uh, yep, Secretary saying get rid of it. Uh, Heather, yeah, thanks. 47 people still in. I can't believe it. Um, Madstad has the 180 mirror. Yep, I forgot that, Heather. It does. Uh, that's the rider scan mirror. Great uh, safety aid in traffic. And that, that mirror right there, uh, I think the combination of the screen and that mirror made the uh, my Riker pretty famous. Uh, I found a couple of different uh, people on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, even on uh, YouTube doing product advertisements, and I was the guy behind the handlebars giving a, a double thumbs up, uh, pointing at that mirror and then a double thumbs up. They were using my video clip from one of my commute vlogs to sell their products. Jackasses. How about my commission check? Coffee truck. Yeah, I did. And I, I all of them. Well, I reached out to him saying, you know, that's great. I feel honored to be your uh, product salesperson, but uh, you didn't ask. And how about my commissions? And they took down the ads. <laughs> Next time, uh, strike them because you get all of the. Yeah. Well, it was on it was on Instagram and uh, Facebook, so it's a little different. Heather, yeah, uh, scuffed it with your boot. They also take rock strikes from that front wheel, uh, throwing pebbles and stuff at the front edge. Mine's got a little bit of scarring on it, but it's still holding up pretty well. ADV 150 or XADV 750 would be great. Yeah, we'll never see the XADV 750 here, but the 350 might happen. We'll have to find out. We'll hold our breath, turn blue, hopefully not pass out. Uh, okay. Be right back, made a roast. Cool. All right. Well, I'm about to sign off, everybody. Um, any last minute questions before I uh, pull the plug? Because I'm going to eat pizza.
97 dry air. Oh, it ain't dry here. It's uh, it's like 85% humidity here still, and it's 104 in the shade. Oh, it's brutal. Do, 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 do. Yeah, working on the house at night. Yeah, I hear you. Serenaded the best. Hey, I almost uh, didn't see you in there. How are you? Just about to sign off. Uh, you guys will be able to watch it uh, after the fact if you want to. Uh, I'm going to shovel some pizza down my face and drink about uh, two gallons of something. I don't care what it is. I'm thirsty. I sweated out probably a gallon standing out there. Thanks for the lunch wishes. You uh, have a good day, and I will catch you all for the next one. Maybe this Saturday I'll have another Quasi Saturday Night Live. So stay tuned for the announcement. I'll try to put it out at least 24 hours in advance. And uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Have a great day.